Hello, welcome to another video. Today I'm talking about the Adastra solo strings. As you know, uh, ADO is bringing a new library every couple of weeks for their sound paint, you know, player. And uh, they completed their Adastra series, you know, with the chamber group, uh, the full ensemble now with the Adastra solo strings. So I thought, let's check those out. So right now they sell the solo strings for $50 as a bundle. Or if you just need one instrument, it's 20 bucks. I think I got the entire thing for $30. So which brings us one instrument down to less than $8, which I thought, hey, for eight bucks, uh, you know, a cello or a bass or a solo viola, uh, let's try this out, <laughs> see how it sounds. So let's uh, do that first. Let me bring over the player. The good news is this runs in the sound paint player, which is also standalone. So you can experiment a little bit before you fire it up in your sequencer. And if you look, you know, uh, if you're familiar with the sound paint player, uh, it pretty much has the programs, all your sounds you have currently, you know, enabled or downloaded. Uh, they are in, in a brighter color here. So it's like a light gray. And so down here is the string section. So I've got the chamber. You can check my other videos. I have the industrial chamber and the ensemble. And of course, down here are the new solo instruments violin, viola, cello, bass, and then a combination of all of them, and they call them the full section. And we talk about that in a minute. As you can see, violin 2 doesn't really exist. Kinda it exists. If you open up the violin folder, it's sorted by key switches, legato, sustain, the shorts, the, and the sound labs. So that's what you're getting for your, you know, $10 or $20 full price. And uh, they made a violin patch and they kind of made this, uh, you know, they cheated a little bit, and I can show you how they did this. So let's open uh, uh, the regular violin first. So let's go for a legato sound. Here we go, violin legato. Let's do close. So it loads this one sample set into the first slot. There are eight slots, by the way, in Sound Paint. You can combine everything, whatever, from the piano to the strings to woodwinds. You know, you can throw it all in and, and make some interesting... Uh, combinations of sounds. So this would be the, the violin legato, and you can control, of course, with the mod wheel. It tells it in the description what it does. Mod wheel controls the time speed to change vibrato speed off by default. Aha. Yeah, a little more. And because it's polyphonic legato, if you hit a double stop, and then you move, let's say the lower voice, it keeps the upper note, right? So, okay, it's not too bad. Are they pretty much, I think they don't sample every note. Uh, they, they stretch it up or down. And, and, you know, and as you can see, they also have it across the entire keyboard. So you gotta be careful. The violin, as you know, goes from a G here. To maybe a high C, yeah, or they go here up to an E flat. They say E, high E. So everything else above is stretched samples, right? Which is an effect, can be useful. You know, it doesn't sound like a violin, but uh, something interesting. And also on the bass side, this is viola territory, but it sounds a little thinner than the viola, right? Because it's a stretched uh, G sample. And we can go all the way down for effect. So it doesn't really sound like a double bass, but it's, you know, it could be very effective if you add some, you know, reverb and, and delay and maybe you do a special kind of score or, or music project that requires some interesting, uh, you know, different kind of sounds. So you can pick, you know, legatos uh, and I'm going to compare the, the spiccatos in my sequencer. I uploaded a piece of music. We can hear it, how it sounds together. Uh, you know, again, for the price, it's decent. It's, you know, of course, you cannot compare this to the big libraries from Embertone, you know, that cost a couple hundred dollars or the other solo instruments. This is a bare bones, right? So if you just need a quick, uh, let's say, pizzicato, here it is. You know, it's it's decent for, for you know, your quick demos. And again, the footprint also is small. It's only a couple gigabytes. It's not that large. So there's the spiccados, and they're not round robin. 
I mean, they sound nice. They're very responsive. Nice attack, but as you can hear, there's, it's the same sample going. So it's not round robin. It sounds a little, you know, mechanical, but in the context of maybe a piece. So, yeah, it's okay. I'm more impressed by the sound lab combinations. And I tell you why. Because this is the magic of this player. You can add all those effects and arpeggiator. You can uh, have different options, touch voicings. You can do a lot of things by, uh, you know, let's open up one of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, combined sounds here. This is like, you see what's loaded. It's a spiccato close and the ensemble spiccato. And here you have it. See, it has, let's turn the ARP off. See, that's now, we see, we are, if you look up here, we are morphing between the solo sound and the ensemble. So, well, you know, stuff like that. Gloomy Marcados. Let's see what that is. All right, you, yeah, you, you see where that's going. You can have a lot of fun. Um, for instance, when I go to the ensembles uh, patches under Sound Lab, there is one that has it's called the Film Spicados, and this is actually see everything's loaded. We have uh, the solo violin, the chamber cellos, the basses, the solo viola. Nothing on this side, so it's four slots here. And if I play a chord. <laughs> Because the whole button was clicked, you can actually get uh, let go of your hands. But this is the pattern. You know. So that's kind of cool. And they have some presets too you can load. Uh, so that's kind of neat. And now, of course, every day, let's turn this off here. You can hear it's all over the keyboard. They even give you some ranges down here. Bass, cello, violin, viola, but split. So I like the sound labs. Of course, there's also, you know, you can load just, let's say, all the picados in, all sections. All that is there. Um, let's go back to the solo strings. As I want to tell you, the second violin is like a, a compromise. So they didn't sample another violin, but what they did, let's open up the sample. If you click on racks, it says that the mod wheel controls the dynamics and the color is at minus four to darken the tone. So what it does pretty much, if you click on B, you can see here's the, the color button. So this is the second violin sound. So, so if I change the color button to back to normal, that would be the violin one, the regular violin sound. And so what you can do is actually you can change the tone. Yeah, it's a little more mellow, maybe almost with a mute on. And then it, it starts it starts sounding artificial. It starts sounding artificial down the more you go down, which is also cool for effect if you want something really weird. But you really don't want that, right? So, but yeah, that's how they uh, pretty much simulate a second violin by changing the color down a couple of stops. So not bad. Again, this is not the most, the prettiest legato. I mean, it's ex expressive. You can do stuff. And again, it's bare bones. Again, look at the price. So this is not the Bohemian violin, right? Or the Joshua Bell 
uh, you know, violin. I mean, you know, you can't compare that. But again, for a quick, if you just need a a very quick legato to demonstrate something or, you know, again, put it on your laptop, I think um, this is fine. Also, the despicados, you know, I think the cello, let's load the cello just to compare that. Cello, let's get a legato close on the cello. Let's hear it. Mod wheel. So it's nice. There's no portamento. Again, this is very easy, but again, it's usable and don't have too many high expectations. But again, we're talking $8, right, for the sound here, uh, you know, 20 if you buy it individually. And also, you know, they have some interesting sound labs. They played with Melancholic. They do a little uh, pitch wheel. It's, it's now linked to my mod wheel down here. So that's pretty cool. So I think you want to use this library for different sounds, not really to emulate a string quartet, but to maybe experiment and go out of the range. See, that when it gets interesting, I think although the viola had a very cool patch they experimented with, it's called the trippy bends. I like that a lot. So look at this mod wheel. Actually, the pitch, uh, micro pitch, is already set to automatically alter, alternate between you know a couple ascent. And up here with my mod wheel, I can go a little more in. Okay, let's let's see what happens here on the viola. Yeah, that's interesting, and especially on the low side, too. So interesting stuff. Uh, and also, you can modify everything yourself. You click on effects, you can see uh, what's currently activated. This is like a delay scat, and you can go in and pick. They give you so many subgroups of, of effects and EQ, and you can add more fields. And there's also the arpeggiator, if you want it, yes or no. And uh, so, yeah, I think in within SoundPaint, if you combine certain elements and, and have some fun with those sounds, they really shine, and they get more interesting than just being the regular string quartet, right? I mean... And also, as you know, Edu has done the deep sampled violin and viola, and they sound way better. So this is, again, something you can throw in. And let me show you another one, which I liked. Uh, this was the pizzicato with the piano. See, this is now something very easily to do. So they, they put in the solo violin pizzicato, the cello pizzicato, close, and the bass. And over here, if you have it, the 1928 piano. I think that came actually free with the sound paint when they first released it. So what happens now, if you start playing very quietly, you hear the pizzicato. But if I hit harder and hold the chord, So very interesting. So you can actually have a piano sound and the pizzicato at the same time, right? So very easily done. And you can balance it out here immediately with a volume slider if you want more or less piano. So, so quick orchestrations even and creating some new tones in the sound paint. So definitely cool. I think if you get it with a discount uh, and you want to throw in those uh, solo sounds and combine them with some other instruments, yeah, definitely worth it. Uh, do not, I would say, don't have this as your main solo string library. But I'm going to pull up uh, Cubase now and we're going to listen to a Beethoven 
Quartet, I, I did some comparison with the short notes, the uh, spiccados, and I show you what I found out. So here we go. All right, here we are, Cubase. I loaded uh, the uh, sound paint solo violins, the key switches this time. I'm switching between one legato note at the beginning. That's how the piece goes. And I want to hear the staccatos. There's the spiccatos, actually, the short notes. And this is from the Beethoven uh, string quartet, very famous uh, movement. And let's hear a little bit how this sounds. So here we go. This is uh, the solo strings. So yeah, it's not bad, but you can tell it's it it doesn't have the round robins, so it sounds a little bit mechanical. And also, as I told uh, on the earlier segment of this video, it's so responsive. The moment you hit it harder, it it gets that accent, which can be great maybe in in certain situations. But of course, in in a you know a simulation like this with the Beethoven where it's so elegant. Uh, it, it, for me, it's just too much. In comparison, it still sounds, in certain parts, actually, it sounds quite nice, right? Especially the 2D part with the long notes and the double stops here in the back. And and I also noticed it's very fast. I'm at 240. So I slow this a little bit down. It sounds a little better. It, it You know, the, the, the samples speak a little better. But I thought I'd give you another shot at a different... Uh, I, I thought I'd give you another look at a different library. So now to compare this with a more expensive library, I uh, uploaded the Embertone strings, the Fischer Viola Friedlander violin and the Blake cello and the Joshua Bell uh, solo violin. So now we can hear how that sounds. Yeah, so you can hear it's definitely a, a different world on those. Uh, I think uh, they are round robin. And of course, the Joshua Bell is very soloistic, right? You can hear that. Spiccato, of course, has a completely different feeling. And um, that's, um, you know, that's why it's so, uh, you know, also so expensive because of all those samples in here. So, but you know what? I think, uh, yeah, it's a matter of spending, you know, uh, 30 or $50 or 300 right? So. It depends what you need. But as I said, I like the Adastra solo strings in combination with some of the other ones. Uh, maybe add them on and experiment also with the effects and use them in a different kind of way. So for my solo strings libraries, I would certainly go to the other ones. I also programmed a legato section from the Debussy Quartet to see how that sounds with the Adastra solo strings. So here we go.
So not bad. You can hear it has that intimacy of a string quartet. You know, uh, of course, if you use some of the other libraries, I didn't program the, the, the Friedlanders and Fishers because you need to pretty much redo all your mod wheels because each library has reacts differently and the Joshua Bell also is tricky. You almost need to play it in again. But I think, you know, again, for the price point, uh, it's sufficient. I mean, they're way better libraries, but again, we're talking, you know, 30 to $50 here. So it's expressive. It still sounds... If you play it to somebody, you can demonstrate, you know, hey, this would be a smaller, you know, four people ensemble, the quartet playing this instead of the section. So in recap, I don't really think you need the Adastra solo strings if you have the other ones already. If you have the Ember Tones or the uh, Joshua Bell or the uh, what else is out there, the Bohemian, you know, solo cello, solo violin. It doesn't really help you then because it's it's really basics. But if you don't have anything and you want that little bit of string quartet sound to demonstrate to your clients or to experiment with, I think the Adastra is nice to have for that price. And also, if you're an owner of the sound paint libraries in general and you want to use it for atmospheric, you know, sound design and play with them, especially the extended ranges of, you know, those instruments where you don't, you, you have them and sound paint makes that happen. I would say, you know, yeah, get it with a coupon and add it to your uh, sound paint library. All right. So that's my quick take on the Adastra solo strings. Uh, thanks for watching and until next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.